I have to apologize for the crying in the background. That's one of my boys, but uh, it's inevitably a, a part of everyday life when they're young. Rabbi Chaim Bital was the great student of the Arizal of Rabbi Isaac Luria. And together with Rabbi Joseph Caro and other individuals like Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, Rabbi Shimon al um, they formed sort of this contrary, this group of individuals that were Chalachist and Kabbalist who have proven to be extremely influential uh, in later Judaism. And of course, they were found in Safed or Safat in the 16th century. And Rabbi Chaim Bital, as Rabbi Baruch Gelman related, was once approached by a student who asked him a very seemingly simple question. Uh, and that's, why does the Torah with its 613 commandments did not, does not include a specific commandment that tells us that we should be good, that we should be nice people, if you will? Uh, we have commandments, of course, in the Torah that tell us not to covet, uh, not to kill, not to, uh, uh, you know, commit theft, things of this nature, uh, respect boundary lines and so forth, honoring our, our parents and elders. But there's no specific commandment that tells us that we should be good people, as it were. And so, unfortunately, sometimes you find individuals who are very uh, observant religiously, who are not necessarily good people in terms of the way that they behave. And you can find this in, in many religious traditions. Now, yesterday's parasha was Acharemot, and this week's parasha is uh, Kedushim, and those generally are read together. Uh, and there are themes between the two of them that I'd like to touch upon in this uh, brief uh, Debar Torah. In the Talmud, in Tractate Yoma, we find, of course, a discussion regarding Yom Kippur which is what Parasha Acharet Mot begins with. And one of the things that we learn in uh, Masechet Yoma is the sort of the popular reason, the well-known reason that the, the second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, and that's because of Sinat Chinam, baseless hatred. Now, what many people don't know, or at least is less familiar to them, as Rabbi David Silverberg points out, is a section in uh, the Talmud uh, tract, Talmudic tractate, uh, Shabbat, which tells us that the reason that the temple was destroyed was because of the failure of Jews to reprove one another. And in Parashat Kedushim, in Leviticus, I think it's 1917, we read, uh, that you will surely reprove, uh, if you will, your neighbor, your brother. Um, it's a responsibility that is borne upon the individual to correct the person next to him, if you will. So how do we reconcile these two views? Is it possible? You know, is it sinam chinam? Is it failure to reprove? And so we look at uh, the Magid of Duvno, um, who was not Hasidic, which is interesting, of course, because when we talk about the Magid of Mezrich or uh, others, they're usually uh, they're Hasidic. But in this particular case, he was not. I think he was Lithuanian, if I remember correctly. And the thing that he said is that the prerequisite for correcting a brother, if you will, is that there has to be mutual respect. Because if there isn't, the criticism will instead degenerate into sort of a tit for tat. It's simply another aspect of the competition that the other person may feel in relation to the other person. And this is something critical because we do have a responsibility to correct, but only in those circumstances where we believe that the person, of course, will be uh, receptive. Because if not, then it engenders potential. Uh, hatred and the type of strife that we obviously want to avoid. And so one of the primary things that we have to do is to cultivate a sense of respect and a sense of humility on our part so that we in turn can receive uh, helpful criticism, but also to show other people that we value uh, the worth because of course they're made with Salam Elohim, they're made in the image of God, and we have a duty to respect that uh, and to honor that image. Now, returning to the first thing that I mentioned about Rabbi Chaim Bital, when he was asked, why does the Torah not have a specific commandment regarding uh, you know, being a good person, being a nice person, uh, he answered very directly. And he said, because the Torah was not given to beast, it was given to human beings. Um, and of course, in sort of an odd way, um, Rabbi Baruch Gelman expressed it in Spanish, and it has a certain force, I think, that uh, maybe is lost in the English. But the idea is, is quite simple, is that humanity is expected to behave on a particular level. 
it is supposed to be nice, if you will. It is supposed to have human respect for one another. And when we do not have that, we become like the beast who are savage, who are not trained, who are not domesticated. Uh, this is something that is critical to the relationships between one person and another, between one person and their family. And of course, it's the foundation to having a civilized society and also being able to fulfill what the Torah commands that we should correct our brother. Now, the Magid of Duvno also stated that the key to understanding this is found in the first part of uh, Leviticus 17, 19, where it states, Lotizna, you will not hate uh, your brother in your heart. And this is the foundation. And in order for us to have uh, a successful relationship, we cannot have hatred or we cannot despise one another. And so this, I think, is the most important thing. Uh, certainly one of the things that we can take away from these two um, connected uh uh, and I hope that uh, encourages us to continue to improve our behavior and our respect for one another.